Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, <coughs> bless you. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me, Peter. And uh, uh, it's a great uh, day so far. So many exciting talks. I'd like to uh, contribute uh, some views, some some studies we've done at what at um, uh, Geodata Science Group and. Credit should go to the students and colleagues and former colleagues who um, contributed to this talk. Uh, so um, I will um, um, just um, on the landscape of uh, reservoir challenges. Uh, this is how I kind of partitioned it into discovering patterns in geological and reservoir data, uh, subject to uncertainty. That's my kind of uh, topic. Uh, describe variability and heterogeneity of some su subsurface, and this is where uh, all the uh, might of geological knowledge comes in. Predict the outcomes of the resource development, and that's where we calibrate models to data to make predictions, and finally make decisions under uncertainty based on those predictions. So, in my and yeah, interpretable AI is my view should be have have the footprinted uh, across all these four. Uh, four steps. Uh, today, just for the uh, sake of time, I'll just give you a illust uh, brief illustrations on the discover, describe, and predict. So discovering patterns in geological reservoir data, I'll go straight to the, to the problem. And yeah, there's some examples, um, some great results were shown today on facies classification. I'll contribute um, another a real study, and we're focused on uncertainty, actually, and particularly on interpretation uncertainty. And there's a lot in it because when we petrophysicists interpret logs, uh, it's a um, quite expensive manual job with a lot of uncertainty there. And sedimentological interpretation, uh, facial interpretation, also uh, has, has um, um, introduces biases. So we looked at the um, uh, with the colleagues from British Geological Survey, this uh, North Falkland Basin uh, field, uh, which, which is a turbulent field. And uh, the data set is, uh, is, is great. We looked at the five wells, uh, and it was with mile of core, which was interpreted by BGS. And what they've seen in the core was the, there was some good, uh, good turbidites, good reservoirs, good, good turbidite turbid sands, but also, yeah, which are high-density stuff. But also, they've uh, uh, depicted um, the, the different, different turbidite scenarios, which are these uh, hybrid event beds, which are much tighter, um, much denser um, baffles, um, uh, which are baffles to flow on this, um, the edge of the field. And you can see that those in core, but uh, these hybrid event beds are uh, below wireline resolution. So, and uh, they're really important when, uh, when identifying the, the conceptual uh, structure of the uh, reservoir and how the fans are um, uh, oriented in the, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the reservoir. So uh, the problem I'm, I'm, I'm going to, to, to share with you is that the, um, the same interval can be interpreted as a, as a high uh, as a good quality, um, uh, high density uh, turbidite with high NTG, no barriers to vertical flow, or <coughs> it they could uh, be interpreted as these hybrid event beds, which uh, low NTG potential uh, baffles to flow. And we uh, we set up a um, yeah traditional um, um, facies classification setup where we used uh, input wire-like lo uh, log inputs, including raw logs but also engineering features. And this is what uh, petrophysicists would, would do. They, they actually uh, look at how, how the logs interact uh, with, e with each other cro um, uh, cross line and uh, how they differentiate. And so we added those engineered features into Random Forest Classifier, which was mentioned earlier, and got uh, actually uh, pretty, pretty spot on predictions with uh, some bits we been misclassified. And uh, what I want to highlight here is the feature importance because uh, random forest is a type of tree-based classifier. Who's familiar with random forest? Yeah, oh, quite a few, so I don't need to talk much about it. But it gives you the, uh, the uh, relative importance of the features. And what was encouraging when we saw that the, um, the, f uh, the, the, the three most important features are the gamma ray and those engineered, uh, engineered features, the resistivity and porosity difference. And these are those which 
petrophysis would 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 guide uh, the interpretation also. It looks like the random forest follows this logic. And then it was interesting uh, with with one more feature, which is the, the oil water uh, contact, because there's only one well with oil water contact. And when uh, that well wasn't in the training set, obviously uh, this feature had zero impact, fair enough. And But in this case, the wells which were, uh, the, the intervals which were below the oil water contact uh, were failed uh, to predict by by the classifier, which is again correct because the um, the um, the, uh, the uh, wireline behavior would be affected by the water. But if we include uh, the, uh, the uh, this interval in the training, then it it gained it gained uh, weight, and actually the prediction of that interval interval improved massively. And uh, by we we did we only had uh, five wells, so we kept. Uh, one, 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 uh, we trained on three wells, uh, one, one was the validation and one always, always test set, uh, the test well. And if we iterate, uh, we end up with 20 combinations, 20, 20 answers basically. And they're all slightly different and most of them uh, will give us the scenario A, which is the, the, base, the base case considered uh, by the, the BGS interpreter. But the four scenarios which identified those uh, purple stuff, which is the, uh, the hybrid event beds. So this alternative uh, cl uh, class uh, classified scenario highlighted as that the, there are intervals with these um, uh, worse, worse reservoir quality. And this is, this is the blow up. So this is the, the, how it looks in the course. So this is the, um, actually the, 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 the hybrid event. And uh, so you can see here, this, it's, it's quite well predicted here. And this is this is another phase is also the intermediate phase, which is uh, um, um, yeah it looks like that. So basically, uh, across those twenty scenarios, we can obtain uh, normalized entropy, which is the uh, the measure of diversity. And and this this entropy uh, highlights as the intervals where we are less where the classifier is less certain which scenario it is, and this can be flagged as as uh, the the potential uh, the potential zone with the high risk of, of barriers. So uh, next to the, uh, to the description, and this is, I would refer to, to the work which was done this summer by uh, the MSc student here at Watt, and thanks to uh, Ray Ramuddin and Conoco and his colleagues who set, up, who set us up with this challenge, which were, uh, turned out to be a very challenging project. This is uh, uh, the, 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 the problem of seismic obscured area, uh, and maybe some of you would recognize the the field, which I would mention. So basically, the um, uh, the, the the challenge uh, where we were uh, uh, we, we we tried to tackle was to rec uh, reconstruct the uh, the PP images from the PS, which is uh, which is uh, uh, much uh, uh, much much better quality. And we used uh, generative networks for that. Um, I think we've been mentioned in some talks. Basically, won't, won't talk much about it. But basically, generative adversarial networks. Uh, have this unique feature. They've got two competitive learners, and uh, one of the learners generates fake images and improves and learns to become better and better in generating those. And the, the other learner, the discriminator, discriminates the fake from real, from the training, and again improves uh, on, on, uh, through learning. And this competitive, uh, competitive uh, character uh, really is able to uh, create this uh, super critical situation to find uh, more flexible, uh, flexible scenario prediction scenarios. So this is the um, the seismic volume, which was initially looked like a lot of data, uh, but apparently when we started training it, uh, <laughs> even that uh, amount of data was never enough. So the workflow, yeah, this is the the generator. We use the conditioning. Uh, flavor the conditioning ver uh, version of uh, of GAN to to condition it to the uh, to the bound uh, to the boundaries and uh, then the discriminator again was conditioned to the uh, PP as well to discriminate between <laughs> fake and real images and this is the um, uh, the the standard plot of uh, the the loss functions and uh, yeah the the loss of discriminate in blue the generator loss in in in, in uh, orange and the validation error, and you can see that the adversarial training, yeah, the, the the error losses, they they do fluctuate, and basically the competitive nature is also seen here when 
the, the higher the discriminator loss is, the lower the generator loss is. And then uh, they kind of, uh, there's a step change when the uh, generator improves and then discriminator worsens up and then again discriminator takes over. So this is, uh, looks like the, the GAN was doing, doing the right thing. Uh, so there's no complete win of one or the other. So what we got uh, based on the, on the test set was, was reasonably encouraging. So we, uh, this is the, uh, the PS set used initially, and this is the generated PP versus the, the, the reference PP, the test PP, which looked like it's, the GAN is picking some of the structures, uh, and these are the boundary conditions. Uh, but yeah, it did struggle with the, with the noise and compl complex geology, and it, did, it didn't recover the amplitudes. This is something we, we, we kind of had to, had to uh, leave aside and uh, look separately into the amplitude issue. When the, we did a blind test on the seismic skewed area, that, that yeah, kind of looked a, a bit of mixed feelings. Yeah, it looks like we, 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 we again, do suffer a lot from artifacts. It does pick so, some of the uh, stratigraphy um, uh, from the PS and propagates into PP. So it, it kind of puts some structures into the air, but whether it's a uh, justifiable structure, I think it's still, um, still work, 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 work to be done here. And this is, yeah, the, uh, the generated GAN cube, which again can be uh, feeded back into and see if um, interpretation can be done on that. Right, so uh, what does a GAN see? And this is, these are the, the GAN layers, the mean and the variance. And we can see in the initial layers, we kind of, it picks up large scale trends. And then uh, at, at, the, at the deeper layers, it, it starts refining actually the, uh, the um, sharpening the horizon feature. So that may lead to uh, some informed optimization on the network and uh, potentially increased interpretability because lack of inter interpretability is, um, is the, uh, one of the drawbacks. So just summarize the outcomes, able to produce some uh, quality, uh, good quality PPs but failed on the, on the, on the blind test. Right, so the final, I'll just uh, say a few words about this. Again, mature field case study where we try to, to predict the remaining reserves, and it's, it's quite an uh, uncertain geology, very good quality reservoir. What, what we did, basically, we, we created a, an ensemble of models with uh, exploring the uncertain, the, uh, the, the uncertain parameterization, the range of geological parameters, but there's always missing, there would be something missing in our model description. And this is what we're trying to tackle in this piece of work. We're trying to use data analytics to elicit what is it they're missing locally in, the, um, in our model parameterization. And uh, we, we did it through classification of the, between the static, ge geological, st static geological properties and dynamic response and identified uh, the classes of the correlation and uh, did a, a, simple, um, uh, um, um, a simple mapping of that. And when we looked at the, at the classes, this is the, um, the, the, uh, the class propagation, actually it, uh, it, it, it coincided with, um, with the carbonate high. So this is the next slide. So this is the depth of the, of the carbonate layer and this is the, the, the Jurassic high which comes high here and thinning out. So obviously the, the, the rock type three, the NTGs ro in rock type three somehow related, caused by this thinning carbonate, which wasn't in the model in the first place. We just picked it from the, uh, this link between static and dynamic data. And based on the enhanced ensemble, based, based on this additional uh, parameters which were recovered, we uh, came up with the improved ensemble and uh, um, built up the confidence map ba based on multiple history matched models. So in summary, uh, so added value, identify po possible alter alternatives in um, geological description, in, in geological data, which that would impact uh, reservoir decision, and that could be done from the bulk of data. Tackle generative problems to, uh, of obscure pattern reconstruction and help to introduce uh, re reservoir feature that have been, have been overlooked 
and uh, but if if they can be elicited uh, from data analytics, they can improve the predictions. And the message I would I want to leave you with that AI needs more explanatory power to become more interpretive to predict causation rather than correlation. So a lot of stuff is done by correlation. Uh, yeah, this is the one slide I just just borrowed from from the head of AI in Google. Who yeah, the current this is the current state with ML expertise, data, and computation. So Google does this outer search of the best AI, and this is the, the, the future Google technology. What I'd like to stress, and what I see here in this, this room today, there's a lot of domain expertise which is actively uses machine learning. And I think this is very, very, very encouraging. And thank you, and thanks all the, all the uh, companies which supported this uh, research.